and welcome to another Camp Landing Museum history video. I'm Dr. George Cressman. I serve as the historian here at the Camp Landing Museum. And today I'm going to be telling you about the railroads that operated at Camp Landing during World War II. So when Camp Landing was mobilized for federal service in the summer of 1940, road access was very restrictive. And of course, when the camp uh, was mobilized for federal service, the planning evolved to a training capacity of just over 60,000 people, soldiers, with a supporting civilian crew that could go as high as 5,000 people. To house, feed, equip all of those people, you needed an immense containment area. The problem the post had was that road access into Camp Landing at that time was very restricted. The amount of construction material that had to be brought in was too great to allow access by trucks only. So the construction quartermaster quickly realized that a railroad system was absolutely necessary. The Southern Railroad uh, Railway subsidiary, Georgia, and, Georgia Southern and Florida Railway Company, proposed to build a new rail line from Teresa, Florida to Camp Landing. This required a connection of roughly 10 miles, and it had to be completed in one month. The line that was ultimately built provided the capacity that was necessary to manage the construction of materials for the post. The seaboard uh, airlines rail system was also extended from Stark to Camp Landing. And later, that connection handled most of the passenger traffic that came into Camp Landing during the war. Inside the post proper, there were 26 miles a railroad built. You see the construction of the rail system as it's nearing completion. You think about building 10 miles of track just to access the post and then 26 miles of rail inside the post. That work was done in one month. It was done under budget. The question of course is how could you do that in such a short time? Well, it turned out that the uh, Georgia Southern Rail Company had a stock of 60 pound rail. Now, normally for freight traffic, you would use 90 pound rail, but the construction quartermaster agreed to the use of 60 pound rail because the stock of material was already on hand. This facilitated the construction effort made it go much more rapidly. The railroad system was quickly put to work. The construction was actually completed in two days under budgeted time, so slightly less than one month, a total of 36 miles of track was laid. Bed, a ballast, cross ties, and track itself in just under a month for 36 miles. And you see here in this photograph, the, the uh, trains moving construction material onto the post itself. In the next slide, you'll get a sense for how complex the, the system was. It operated in a large loop. So the loop coming in from the south of the post came to uh, a Y where uh, traffic, uh, inbound traffic, moved to the, uh, to the east, cycled through the loop, and exited from the post on the west side of the loop. This allowed access to, uh, to all of the warehouses that supplied the post. And as you see here, there are a total of five spurs coming off, feeding the warehouse area. So these spurs um, go into the warehouse area. The warehouse buildings are between the rail spurs, and this allowed quick access into the warehouse 
allowed unloading rail cars fairly rapidly. As soon as the rail cars are unloaded, they're hooked up and pulled out again through the west side of the Y. For the construction effort, both for the rail and for uh, the immense road system that supplied Camp Landing, a large amount of lime rock had to be moved. So lime rock was brought into the post in large, uh, in large uh, gondola cars, unloaded as you see here in this set of photographs, and, uh, and spread out uh, initially for the rail system itself, but then for the roads, the, uh, the vehicle roads, uh, that, uh, that laced through the facility itself, the post itself. Camp Landing um, had um, uh, a coal system that supplied all of the, uh, the heating and hot water generation done on the post. So coal moved on to the post uh, in uh, between five to 10 rail car loads came in every day, bringing coal onto the site. There was a huge trestle. The uh, coal cars are moved up onto the trestle uh, and open, the bottoms open, dumped down on the trestle. You might imagine the huge amount of coal dust that's generated, uh, but nevertheless, there's that coal and then it's distributed across the, the post for, uh, for heating and hot water generation. Here's a passenger train arriving at night. The bulk of the men who trained here arrived by train, not by bus, uh, not individual vehicles. They arrived here by train. So here's a rail uh, a locomotive bringing in a, a uh, passenger train uh, late at night. Typical arriving time for troops. On the post, three 90-ton locomotives were used. There were six operating crews and 40 men operated, uh, were part of those, those uh, six crews. Most of those men had been formerly employed by railroad companies and so all of the engineers and brakemen on the uh, post uh, rail system were former former railroad employees, and the bulk of them were limited service employees, so they were here for the duration of the war. Thousands and thousands of freight and passenger cars moved into Camp Landing every month. This was a huge rail operation. And the Post had a full service railroad shop. The, for the three uh, locomotives, Every month, the boiler was uh, shut down and the boiler is cleaned. And then each locomotive annually was taken down. That is, it was uh, completely dismantled and uh, rebuilt. All worn parts replaced, boilers cl uh, uh, thoroughly cleaned and, and tubes as necessary, tubes replaced. Well, thank you for joining us for another of our uh, Camp Landing history videos. We most appreciate that you take this time to join us and learn more about Camp Landing. Please come and visit with us. We'd enjoy seeing you, hearing your own stories of World War II history. Come see us every day from noon to four for Camp Landing Museum and all our wonderful staff and volunteers. This is Dr. George Cressman signing off.